For most of my life, I have been a pretty messy person just in general, but over the past couple of years, as I've been on this kind of minimalist journey, I really started to build some habits to help build and then keep a clutter-free house. And when you have a clean, clutter-free house, the, the peace of mind and the reduced stress and the increased productivity has been really, really amazing for me. So these are some of the habits that I have built to help keep a clutter-free home. I hate to break it to you, but it doesn't need to soak. This is an excuse I used to use a lot, and I think a lot of people use this, is after you finish uh, making whatever meal you're making, you'll put something in the sink uh, to soak, and then it'll sit there for most of the day, sometimes most of the week, and then you always have a pile of dishes and pots and pans sitting in your sink. So a habit that I've kind of installed to fix that is directly after cooking, before stuff can harden on it and it takes forever to get off, just really cleaning it. Maybe uh, like once a month something actually needs to soak, but the rest of the time it just needs to be done right away before it hardens and gets way worse. So immediately after each meal, we each just either do our own dishes or put them in the dishwasher. And after cooking each thing, we just immediately wash it. Just taking that 30 seconds or that minute and getting it done before it gets worse has been really helpful for me. And it helps keep your general overall kitchen looking a lot cleaner without things piling up. And as someone who spends a lot of time in the kitchen, that is way less stressful. Routines. Having a morning routine and an evening routine is super helpful for a ton of different things, but it's also helpful for keeping your house clean and neat and tidy. I mostly focus on the evening routines because I like to have my morning uh, very clean and simple. I don't want to have to do anything uh, like cleaning up the kitchen or picking up my clothes or anything like that. I want to make sure I have time to you know, sit down with a cup of coffee, do some reading, chill out, plan out my day without having to stress about cleaning up. So I've kind of set a rule where my evening routine is never going to bed until the house is like pretty much clean not like vacuumed and spotless and perfect but like there's not stuff on the counters the dishes aren't out uh, my clothes are just laying around like everything's kind of set up to make the next day uh, really enjoyable and kind of set yourself up for success so just kind of making decluttering a habit instead of an event Assign spots for everything. This is something that I definitely didn't used to do. There was always stuff that was kind of floating around, sitting in different spots that really didn't have a home. So it was always on a counter, on the table, on the floor, shoved under a bed. So if you have something and it actually has a purpose, it should also have a home. And you shouldn't just put stuff down you should put it away. As we've been moving into this new home over the past couple of weeks, we've really been making sure that everything we take out of a box and we put away, it has a permanent home. And if it doesn't have a permanent home, maybe that's something that we don't need and we declutter it. And for me, I've been trying not to have the, the permanent home be in a box or in a bin, but actually designing my house a little bit to have the stuff that is really important to me, like coffee. I realized that I don't have the most minimalist coffee set up in the world, but it was something that was really Really important to me so I made sure that I actually had space for it to go neatly and tidy and it doesn't just end up all over the kitchen counters like it used to but it actually has a home donation box. We've had pretty much an ongoing donation box for about the past year and I think this is really a huge help when you're trying to have a clutter-free home and just having it around always makes you aware that as you're going about your daily routine, as you're doing your daily things and you see something that you don't need and you think, boy, I should you know declutter that next time I declutter, well now you can just throw it in the box right away every week, every month, whatever it is for you, however much you're getting rid of, you can just go and drop it off or you can go and sell it. We've just pretty much always had one going on. It's been really helpful for us and it kind of makes the whole decluttering process a little less daunting, a little more effortless when you don't have these huge tasks. You're just kind of, as you're going through a few things a day, just continually uh, filling up that box. If you guys have any more habits that I missed, I would love to hear them. I'm always looking for more tips, so throw them down in the comments. Make a rule about your flat surfaces. Used to be a huge issue for me, uh, just as you walk in the door, you throw stuff down on the counters, uh, on any flat surface really, just anything that had area would collect something. I know I'm not the only one who does this, but it feels that way sometimes. 
Um, so we have recently kind of implemented like a flat surface rule where we're just not allowed to have anything on uh, specifically this island, but on the countertops, on anywhere where it doesn't belong for more than like a day. If you put it there in the morning, it has to be cleaned up uh, by the nighttime. And that's been really helpful for me because when you walk in and you see a room where all the flat surfaces like look like actually nice and what's supposed to be there is there and what's not supposed to be there it is not all over the place. It's so much less stressful. Like it, it really does make a big difference mentally for me. Meal plan and reset. We've been trying to do this every Friday or Saturday morning before we go to the farmer's market is to decide what exactly we're going to eat for the next week and then going out and buying just that stuff, not other stuff, going through the fridge, throwing out stuff that's old or moldy or just like actually eating that stuff so that it doesn't pile up. It's actually pretty easy to collect a lot of food clutter, just stuff that you got just in case or you were hungry at the store or you don't even know why you have it. And then all that stuff starts filling up different cabinets and spilling out over your fridge. It's very easy to have way too much food or way too much random food that you're not actually going to eat. So we've been trying to simplify that and streamline that as much as possible. So we're not wasting time. We actually have space for all of our stuff that we are going to eat to go and our refrigerator is not cluttered all the time, but it actually uh, has been relatively open, which has been really nice. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to support my coffee addiction. Find and address your pain points. These are gonna be uh, very different for everybody, but you generally know what your problem is. Maybe you have a drawer that's just constantly overfilled with stuff, or every day you have your mail all over the place and it just gets strewn about your house. Finding out what that problem is and then creating a system to address that, like always dealing with your mail immediately, opening all the letters, throwing out all the junk, you have a file where things go so that it doesn't just sit on the kitchen counter and then it just continues picking up more and more stuff. Kind of taking a step back and evaluating what is that problem that's really bugging you but it's just continually just keeps happening and you really would like that to change. Usually there's this little habit or little system that will cure that problem in like a minute or under five minutes every day and you won't have that stress anymore. Limit your inflow, especially when you're starting kind of changing these habits and you're trying to get rid of a bunch of stuff but you still have that habit of going to the store all the time or buying stuff online, impulse buying stuff. It's super helpful to implement some of the minimalist uh, rules of like maybe you don't buy anything unless it sits on a list for seven days or sits in your shopping cart online for 24 hours or even for a month depending on how much you want to challenge yourself or doing a no spend week or no spend month or no clothes for six months. Taking some of these challenges, doing different ones and starting to change those habits, starting to stop the, the influx of stuff that is continually cluttering up your home. And as you do that more and more, it kind of becomes second nature and you don't have to stress about it. And you're making sure that everything you bring in your home is something that you actually really want and really brings a lot of value to you. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe because every subscriber that I get, I have one more subscriber. So 